Good afternoon, everybody. I've been invited by VDAB, which is the Flanders PES, which is one of the four PESs in Belgium. Um, I'm going to talk to today about the guidance of, uh, towards unemployment of people over 50. I will start this presentation with a quote of, with a quote. So I will start this presentation with a quote of Patrick. This is not Patrick, but he seems like a Patrick. Patrick is, he doesn't consider himself as an older person because he puts it in brackets, but he still has to look for a job and he encounters some difficulties. He says he's been disappointed and frustrated at times, but he won't give up. He says, I know there's work for me, and thanks to the Active Plus Club, I'm not giving up hope. Active Plus is the name we have for our program towards um, people over 50. Um, before I will talk about what we do within Vidya Bay, I will um, give a brief context. This is a, a slide which shows the evolution of unemployed people over 50 in the periods of about 30 years, the 80s until now. We see two significant trends. The first trend is um, in a context of rising unemployment and the policy decisions then were aimed at phasing out older workers into early retirement, into retirement, so we see the number of unemployed people dropping. Um, the second phase in the term of the new millennium, um, things were going well. Um, there were a lot of open vacancies which uh, weren't, we weren't able to fill, so there was a gradual phasing out of those exemption measures um, throughout the years, and it still continues um, to today. This, of course, has an impact on how we work as a VDAB. You see, for start, there's a strong impact on our inflow, so you see um, two big peaks, one around 2004, when the first ex exemption measures were um, phased out, the age limit was um, phased out from 50 to 50, uh, from 58 to 50, so we had a lot of uh, new inflow within VDAB. And the second one was last year. Um, there haven't, hasn't been that much policy changes uh, for the moment, but they have been, um, yeah, they have been, um, sorry. <laughs> they have been, announced, sorry that's the word I was looking for, um, so a lot of people are expecting that they have to come back to the unemployment, um, uh, so they, they are um, making the strategic choice to, to start early. So the activation of 50 plus is not easy, we have to work with a lot of boundaries. Uh, first of all, um, hiring um, an older individual um, comes with high labor costs for employers, plus if they want to get rid of them, they also have to pay a high severance package. There's also uh, a lot of prejudice. We heard uh, about many of those prejudices today, not only from the employer's side, but also from themselves. I talked to people and they said, I cannot believe I am now unemployed. I had such a bad idea about the unemployed people, but now I'm one of them, and it really takes a different frame of mind from them for this themselves as well. Then. They also have a different profile relatively to the uh, age group um, 25, 64. They're lower skilled, they're much more likely to be long-term unemployed, and they're much more likely to face an occupational disability. In Flanders, we have 22% of the people over 50 facing occupational disability, so we also have to face uh, that um, problem. And also for them, there are fewer financial incentives to look for a job. Not only do we have an income guarantee, there are also uh, a lot of early retirement benefits left. Plus, most of these people have paid off their houses, their children are gone, so the financial incentives to look for a job are, lesser, uh, are fewer than, for example, for me. So to face these challenges, we have to have a long-term vision in which many actors work together on different paths um, some of these uh, measures are 
um, financial measures towards employers, but also towards uh, people um, looking for a job themselves. We also have to look at alternative workplace strategies to part-time work, to more flexible work times um, in order to keep the work-life balance more in check. Uh, we also have to look at how to incorporate a more transitional labor market in our policy. And then uh, a perspective Vidya B is strongly um, working on is to work on a career and competence perspective. Um, So now I will turn to what VDIB does. Um, in 2006, we developed a specific approach for um, people over um, 50, but in the beginning it was not mandatory. People could come to our program vol voluntary. In 2009, we started with our systematic approach. Um, new job seekers between 50 and 52 um, were invited and they were um, they were invited to intense and mandatory counseling. Um, over the years, we raised this age um, limit. So between 2011 and 2015, it was uh, up until 55. Now, uh, in 2015, we raised it until 60. Um, next year, we will raise the age limit until 61. Um, the year after, 62, until our legal retirement age of um, 65 in 2020. We organize our, uh, our coaching. Uh, our, first con uh, our, our first contact is uh, via start communication, in which we invite all um, new, newly, um, well, newly um, inscribed people um, to come to the information session. They can choose between an information session um, with us or with the trade union. Um, we have a good partnership with the trade union, so we can give the same information. Um, what we say, of course, they, they are a bit different from perspective, but what is absolutely in those info sessions is why are you here? What are your obligations? What are your rights? What can VDAB give you? What's the difference between VDAB and RVA and all the other um, government instances? Um, how does this influence your pensionship? Uh, where can you find all the information? Um, how can you find a job? We um, have a digital first strategy, so we try to make people go online first before they come to us. So that's the information you get in the information session. Afterwards, the coaching starts. We used to have one big um, plan for all the people over 50, but um, the employment rates of the people 50 to 55 have, have risen the last years. So we included that group within the normal approach, the made to measure actions aimed at job vacancies, that also the people 25 to uh, 54 have. Um, which consists of individual guidance, but it's made to measure if the coach, if the um, counselor thinks that um, this person is better off in the specific approach, um, then he can, can um, give the person to an active plus coach, and then he can um, follow modules on solicitation training or orientation within the active plus club, but it's not necessary. Um, and those people are also included in the automatic matching. This is a, a, a tool in which the profile of the uh, unemployed person is matched with um, the vacancies. And when there's a match, the vacancy is automatically sent towards um, the individual. To ensure that people are within the right track, we have a training of counselors. It's, co it's called 50 Shades, the wiser, I think it's the right translation. Um, and it's to make people aware, make counselors aware of the difficulties and the specifics um, people over 50 um, deal with. Then for the group 56 to 59, we have a specific approach. It's called Samen op de Brest, which roughly translate as United We Stand, but um, I find that a tad over-dramatic. Over um, that is our classic Active Plus Club, in which you have the 
uh, Active Plus coach, which is a dedicated coach, which is uh, specialized um, to work with 50 plus and all the group modules we offer uh, 50 plus. Also, this is also a way to measure if the Active Plus coach realizes this person is better off in the regular actions towards a specific sector, for example, then um, he's welcome to be, um, well, to be moved to another counselor. For 60 plus, we have a voluntary entry in the Acti in Active Plus coaching, which means that people are free to do, um, well, to, to go into the Active Plus club, but they can also do it for themselves. Next year, this will be 61 and so on and so on. We also offer education and training, but for the group of 50 plus, we found, we found it very hard to motivate them. Um, I talked to a person, I think she was 57, and I said, would you be open to follow an education? She, she said to me, well, I'm not sure. Uh, there's a waiting period sometimes of five months, and then I have to follow an education, a training of a year. That will be one and a half year that I'm off the labor market and for me to start looking, it will be too hard. So we really, um, well, we really go for workplace-based learning, very short, very uh, efficient, and that way we hope that we will raise the attractiveness for 50 plus. Um, a second training we offer is orientation. Many of these people that we, um, that we get in, they, they think, well, what can I do? I, I don't have a diploma, and they don't realize they have gathered many, many competences over the years. So within the orientation, we talk about, well, what can you do? What do you want to do? Um, is there any dream job you always thought about? And is it plausible? Um, for example, uh, related to training, um, we have found that a lot of um, men over 50 wanted to become wanted to become a bus driver so uh, we have a lot of slightly older men in our uh, courses for bus driver at the moment and we um, we yeah we're, we're very happy about that because we know that the bus sector also appreciates um, men that are slightly older because they think they are reliable they're trustworthy and they're very loyal because they often have worked in companies for many many years so that's a win-win for everybody, I suppose. Um, and then third, we, offer, we also offer job application training. I think Suzanne has <coughs> mentioned that many of uh, the people over 50 have never um, applied for a job in their life, lives. For example, yeah, it used to be so that you went to a company and you say, well, I'm good at making <laughs> stairs. Okay, show me how you make stairs and, and if you're good, you can stay. This has changed a lot. Um, many times you have to go to intermediates and you, can, you can, cannot see uh, an employer until you have crossed this inter intermediate. So we, um, so we talk about how to, how to apply for a job, how to write a resume, how to write a motivation letter, but also um, how to do a, an interview. Uh, there are many prejudices, like I said, and we train people over 50 or over 55 on how to counter on those, on those um, well, prejudices when they encounter them, and how they can, how they can give their trumps uh, and their uh, experience as a 50 plus in a company. We also put in a lot of effort for sensibilization of employers and actually the whole wide society. There's a very broad support for the Salmon of the Breast approach. It's been um, the result of mutual agreements uh, of the social partners, so that's very important for us. Um, and then we also have the 50 plus measure, which is a wage subsidy. It's one of the many wage subsidies, but this is one of ADAB in specific. It's aimed at everybody who is 55 plus, and it's also aimed at um, the long-term unemployed between 50 and 55 plus. It's a wage subsidy uh, of 50% of the wage um, for 55 plus. It's um, until retirement uh, for 50 to 55, it's for one or two years. Um, 
We also have an open knowledge platform in which we work together with uh, university, with um, employers, with the social partners, with um, job seekers themselves in order to exchange um, experiences and exchange information and exchange uh, innovative um, projects. I have um, listed two of the innovative projects I find um, interesting myself. We have first the WIND project, which is a uh, called Battle of the Generations. Um, it's a project aimed at employers. So we put, and it's in collaboration with the University of Maastricht. It's, it's in a pilot uh, right now, and the University of Maastricht <coughs> will, um, well, will test the impact, will test the methods, and we'll see if, if it's good to be implemented throughout, um, throughout the, uh, the country or the, the region, actually. Um, so we couple some youngsters with um, people over 50 and we give them the task to design a project aimed at employers to um, enhance their visibility on the, uh, on the labor market. So that way we can couple the strong suit of two uh, important target groups, the youngsters and the 50 plus. Um, via the method of informal learning. And so we hope they learn from each other and that they also um, well, uh, aimed at the employers that they also um, are more visible and, and that they can counter the prejudices in one way or another. And the second pre project is a project, project generation gift. Um, it's a, a dating app. I think it's best compared to that. Uh, you can fill in your profile on the internet as a, as a starter. Um, and you can fill in your profile on the internet as a stopper. Um, and if, if, the, if it matches, then you are, um, yeah, then you, your um, data is given to each other and you can talk to each other, give information, um, communicate, and it results in a 20-day internship um, in the company the stopper is working in. Um, we, think, we also think this is a win-win uh, situation because you have these young people who are gaining some experience, you have the old Old, older person who is able to, to talk about his experiences, who feels worthwhile, um, and you, you might be, it might be a win for the employer because it's possible that he has found a new employee in his young person, in this young person. So all are, all are, all, are all these efforts worth the effort? It's a, it's a question, but I put it between brackets because I think it quite is. Um, you have the, the, the numbers, it's not really an impact of our policy measures, but you see that uh, over the years the group 50 to 55 has uh, the employment rates, the outflow after one year has, has risen and it's nearing uh, the group of 25-49, so we think that's a good, good job. Uh, done. Uh, there are a lot of problems with the group of um, 55 plus. This, this hasn't changed over time, so um, that's why we changed our method to, to our, our specific approach to this group, because we really need to do a lot of work in, in this group. And for the other ones, we try to, to promote self, um, self, self reliancy to go online, to do most of most that you can yourself, um, so that we can help the more, the more vulnerable people um, with our specific approach. There has been, also has been some evidence-based research, um, because the inclusion uh, of, the, of, the, of the mandatory activation has been on, on one date. You can really um, statistically uh, investigate whether there's an impact of that policy. And Jules Bollens, uh, who, works for the, who worked for the, for the KU Leuven, has found a positive impact uh, of the mandatory activation of the older unemployed on the probability that these individuals will return to um, employment. So what does the future hold? Um, I'm, I'm taking on my, my Fons hat. Fons is our, our big boss. Um, he, his vision is that he sees the labor market as a thrift store. Um, 
I, I gave you the, the the example of the of the of the dating app, and and that's really how he sees it. He sees that competences are rented, recycled, upcycled, um, and not just thrown away like they are often now. People have gathered many many competences over the years, and then they retire, and nothing happens with it. So. The role he sees for VDAB is, is in the acknowledgement and certifying of skills um, on how to tune these skills enhancement with these labor market needs to, well, on how to balance demand and, 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 um, and, and the people we have, and then on how to strengthen skills through careers. How can we do that? We can develop skills portfolios, we have development plans, um, there are skills qualification programs we are working on, there is skill driven matching like our automatic tool I told you about and we also um, support and facilitate very um, uh, career guidance services. So th these are some of the routes we can take as VDAB but like I said it's a, it's a, a a project of many paths in which many actors uh, have to work together. Thank you. Thank you, Nina, for your presentation. As uh, we already saw, you presented uh, to us a very interesting approaches who are innovative for some of us. So now um, I really like this activate, active coaching you used as approach and also to put together the old people with the young people, just uh, informal um, learning to, to use. So um, I, now I'm turning to the audience. If uh, they, there are some reflections or questions, please, colleague, feel free. We are coming from different continents. You know, that was very interesting. I thought you have really some very interesting approaches. I like this pairing the generations idea. I was just wondering, I was really struck by the statistics at the beginning to showing that very steep upward curve in uh, unemployment among people aged 50 and plus. And I was wondering what proportion of that increase is simply due to aging of the population in Flanders and how much of it do you see indicates that unemployment is really becoming a greater problem for older workers? I think the aging of the population is, is not the big um, problem that you see in the graph. I think it's the reduction of the exemption measures actually. You see the rates of unemployment but um, these are unemployment um, people actively looking for a job that's within the, um, well, who are receiving support to receive a job. Um, what happened was, um, well, actually we phase out those people into retirement, so they're not unemployed anymore, they're retired. Um, and that's what's happening here. So you see, um, from 2002 onwards, for example, um, the people under 58 had to register as job seekers, and otherwise they will, would have been in early retirement or other exemption measures. We had <coughs> plenty of them. We had the maxi redemption, the mini redemption um, exemption. Sorry, um, we had PVA. There were many, many measures um, to get these people out of the unemployment statistics, but then they were gradually phased back in, actually. Other questions and reflections? Uh, yes, I found the presentation very interesting, and in particular, uh, your group orientation, because for, uh, because for me it is always a question what has to be done on an individual basis and how far can a group work go uh, say, uh, doing uh, the same job but saving resources? And uh, you said that you are doing orientation in the groups, not only job search skills, which might be easier. So uh, which, what is the composition? Can you put an old <coughs> academic uh, 
older, I can, oh, I, I would, I, I'm, not, I'm not feeling old, yeah, a 50 plus academic and uh, construction worker, uh, 50 plus, can you put them all together in the group? That is my first question. Who do you put together? And then a second question is, how far can orientation go within a group? These are very good questions, which we are also struggling with today. Um, at the moment, uh, we are doing an evaluation of our um, group modules, for example. Um, I know that um, there's 20 places in Flanders um, that these group modules are organized, but it doesn't mean that everybody's thrown together. So um, there are people who um, thrive in these group sessions, but there are also people who don't identify them with any of the other people and would rather um, have the orientation alone. And um, because we work made to measure, we allow, um, well, we actually allow people who rather prefer an individual pr approach on orientation um, to do it so. Um, we are at the moment looking at um, our group approach to orientation. <laughs> but it's not really cleared out on how we are going to approach it. I think what I would maybe um, suggest is um, we have a lot of job coaches who are really, really, um, really good in orientation. So I think we should maybe do short modules instead of the, excuse me, instead of the seven, instead of the seven half days that we do now the orientation, that we do small, really focused, um, orientation with small groups with maybe more um, aligned profiles but then the question is on how many can you do it within a year how long do I have to wait because before we can organize one for very high-skilled people or so it's something we are looking at at the moment <laughs> 